Hello and welcome to another lovely session of Civil Engineering with Tanya J. Laird. This is going to be the fifth lecture in the video series on the uh, mathematics program known as SMATH. And this lecture in particular is going to focus on um, applications involving matrices and vectors. Alright, so we have our SMATH loaded up and uh, let's go ahead and get started. Let's see. So, uh, SMATH, what have, we what have we learned so far? Well, we've learned and covered basic, we've covered all the basics. We've covered uh, how, to find, uh, how to define variables, how to define functions, how to work with units, and how to do all of the very basic things with SMATH, including define text boxes, labels, that sort of thing. Um, I think in the previous lectures, we did a good, pretty good job of looking at all of the basics of the essential operations of SMATH. So, if you're still uh, wondering how to get the basics of SMATH going, how to be entering, how to enter variables, how to perform basic calculations, how to enter units, I would suggest looking at uh, lectures one through four in this video series. This particular lecture, this particular lesson is going to focus entirely on matrices and vectors. So um, for anyone who is in an engineering or a scientific background, uh, well, depending on which science, I suppose, but um, in most sciences and engineering fields, uh, matrices and vector operations uh, are very useful and, and sometimes critical to your uh, to the, the calculations and solutions you produce. For example, matrices. For example, in my field, structural engineering, uh, matrices uh, and matrix analysis is the foundation of most uh, indeterminate structural analysis, which is how what most buildings and structures are, and how they're analyzed. Um, anyway. So we're not going to do anything as complex as a you know thousand row by a thousand column matrix in uh, SMATH, but it can be useful to solve to be able to solve basic. Um, it can be useful to be able to solve basic matrices, and perform basic matrix operations within some of your spreadsheets. So, uh, I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and uh, get started. So um, again, I'm not going to uh, provide a lot of instruction on why matrices are useful. I think if you've uh, come to this page and come to this video, you'll probably are familiar with why matrices are, uh, are so useful, and you're just looking for a way to do that in SMATH, and that's what I hope this video will provide. So uh, first of all, I want to define a matrix. Uh, let's just start by defining a matrix A. I'm going to just type the variable A, the letter A. Uh, to create a label, and then I'm going to use the defined as symbol, which I, I, I create or uh, call simply by pressing colon, like I have in the previous videos. Now, uh, in the previous videos, I had uh, a I had a variable like a uh, equal a number or a, a single number or a single value or a single quantity. Here, I want a to represent a matrix or a vector. So the way we do that is we summon the insert matrix command. And you can do that a couple of ways. Um, the way I just did it was I pressed Control M on my, on my keyboard and it produced this, and it pulled up this menu asking how many rows and how many columns I wanted that matrix to be. Or another way to do this would be to uh, cut, go to our menu up here and select input matrix. Obviously hotkeys are going to be a little bit quicker uh, overall, but if you don't want to if you don't want to memorize a bunch of hotkeys and are more comfortable with the mouse, you can of course use uh, the menu up top. Anyway, so I'm going to select input a matrix, and we can of course input whatever matrix we wish and whatever size we wish. But let's go ahead and just put in a three by three matrix. So I want to use this to explore some of the things you can do with matrices in SMATH. So I'm going to start just by putting some random numbers in three two. Put some negatives in there, uh, just whatever comes to mind. Uh, one, let's try negative three. Mm, what's next? Maybe four. How about another five? Oh, maybe a 13 for good luck, and maybe a negative seven to sort of balance out the other one. Well, oh, wow, I have a five and a negative five and a seven and a negative seven. Odd how that worked out. So, what can I do with this? Well, there's all sorts of things I can do with matrices in SMATH. So, for example, if I want to display it, I can now, since I've defined it, just click equals, not defined as, but just equals, and it will display the result. But fair enough, nothing too extraordinary there. Works exactly as you would expect it to. What next? Well, uh, I, will, I can find that I have a whole series of various commands and 
um, functions that I can call upon to manipulate matrices in all sorts of manners, just like you would expect with any program or software that, that is designed to perform matrix calculations. So um, let's say I wanted to create a function called b. I wanted to create a variable b that would be some that would represent some function of uh, a, some manip some manipulation of a. What could I do? So, um, what I could do is first of all I could put input. I could go here and select input function, and if I pull up my matrix menu, I will see that I have a whole series of various uh, options and functions that I can apply to matrices. Now, um, I'm not going to spend the time to go through each and every one of these. these. A lot of these are things that if you're familiar with uh, matrix operations will hopefully be fairly um, familiar. And if, you, if not, you can, go and, you can go and Google these things and look these up in the documentation. What I want to do today is just focus on a, key, a few key ones. So, uh, if you are familiar with any kind of, um, if any, with any kind of matrix algebra or uh, you know, uh, linear algebra, that kind of thing, one of the main things you'll, you'll be familiar with is inverting matrices. So if I go invert, uh, I pull up the invert command, or alternately, I could just type out invert, and it'll pull up the inverse function. Now, if I try to, what happens if I just try to put in a, a quantity, like four feet here? What happens then? Well, actually, it, it, it treated this as a single, oh, I, I believe it just treated this as a single one by one matrix, but um, I'm actually surprised that worked. But uh, anyway, what if I then go and ask it to invert matrix A? And it does. It works through the inverse calculation, and it goes and produces the inverse matrix of A. And again, if you're familiar with matrix math, inverting matrices is very critical. Okay, what else could we do with this? Let's say I wanted to define C. What if I want the determinant of a matrix? So, oh, we could do this a different a number of ways, uh, but let's say we put in a determinant. And once you select the determinant, it actually converts it to the determinant symbol. And I define the determinant of A. And the determinant of this, the determinant of this is negative 303. Okay, again, how did I pull that up? Um, I have C is defined as, and then I pull up my, I start writing determinant, and it I find and what comes up in the autocomplete menu is the determinant command. And then I have my then I have my parentheses or I have my uh, symbol is here, my determinant symbol, and I simply enter the matrix that I want to take the determinant of, which is A. Alternately, I could go to my functions and go and look here, and the determinant command is within here, so that works as well. Okay, so there's that. Just those are some just basic. Uh, those are some basic, ma uh, very basic matrix operations. I'll go ahead and label this as. Um, I'm going to put a text box in it. Now, if you remember from previous lectures, if I want to define a text box, I just select, uh, I just type a quotation mark, and now I have my text box. And I'm going to go ahead and make this italicized and just call this um, basic matrix operations. I like to label my sections as I go. What's next? So I have, I've gone over the ba some basic matrix operations. What if I want something to select a particular element within a matrix? So let's look at uh, selecting an element. So uh, let's say I still have matrix A here, and I'll go ahead and redisplay it. Um, now, if I want to, uh, now if I if I want to actually know what a value is, I can just look at the matrix. Obviously, I, I can just look here and say, okay. The value of the um, the value of the uh, the number that is in this, in the second row and first column is simply one. I mean, I can just look at it. But the whole point of SMath and programs like this is that you can have a whole series of calculations, and you can have things building and referencing and that sort of thing. So you might have some calculation or series of calculations that produces matrix A, but then you don't want to stop. You're not done. You want to use the results of this matrix to then go and produce some other um, calculations. So I might need, uh, I want to embed within this code some sort of calculation that references a value from within this matrix. So how do I do that? All right, so next what I want to do is I want to select one particular element within this matrix. And the way I'm going to do that is first, I'm going to define a, uh, a, a new variable for that quantity that I'm 
um, picking out of that matrix. So I'm going to go ahead and call this T just to keep the uh, chain of variables nice and simple. Then I'm going to type the name of the matrix that I am that I want you to extract a uh, an element from. In this case, A. Then I'm going to type the left bracket symbol. So basically, this is going to I'm going to be using a square bracket and the left uh, the left square bracket. I'm going to I'm not going to type type uh, shift or anything to select the curly bracket. I'm going to use the left bracket symbol on my keyboard, and when I do it creates a, a special kind of subscript that is meant to uh, select a particular element within a matrix. And you can also use a manual command for this from the insert command uh, keys. So let's say I do uh, two comma three. Again, I first have my A, I type my left bracket, and then I put, a, I put basically the row that I want, two, then I place a comma, and it doesn't show the comma, but then it tells me, basically entering a comma, says that I want to then move from the row to the column reference. Two comma three, and we get four. Because if you recall your matrix algebra, the two three position refers to the second row and the third column. Again, the two three position refers to the second row and the third column. So let's review that again. Uh, let me go ahead and delete this bit of stutch. D is defined as A, and then I press the left square bracket, and I press my, uh, I then type my row reference, the second row, two, comma, uh, three, for my column reference, and that will equal then four. And so if I then have something that changes A, or changes that number, if this becomes seven, then this becomes seven. Again, just fairly basic. Uh, uh, it's a fairly basic display of how SMath operates. But again, this is really the whole purpose of using a program like SMath or MathCAD or any sort of uh, mathematical uh, software like this. Is that when you change one thing, all of the changes then cascade throughout the worksheet, which really enables efficient uh, creation of uh, certain uh, highly verifiable hand calculations. Okay, so what's next? So we have, uh, so now we know how to select a particular element within a matrix. And this of course works with any matrix. We can select a, uh, we can select a, uh, we could select three, two, and that way, think about this. If, if I said uh, select three, two, what would that do? If I said D is equal to A uh, three, two, that would be selecting the third row and the second column. So that would equal 13. Again, um, all this is doing is selecting a particular element within the matrix, and then if I had some calculation that then depended on that value, I could embed this within my uh, long string of calculations, and uh, that could be useful in certain applications. Other things you can do, if I select my insert functions here, we can look at some of the other um, references, referencing elements and things like that. Um, so there, if I look at the row command, for example, it, uh, it will extract a row from the matrix. So if I say E equals row, uh, let's say, uh, let's look at the syntax here. Um, one of vector two, one or vector. So let's look at this row. Oh, e is defined as row of, um, let's go ahead and put A comma one. Does that work? It does. So if I want to extract the first row from matrix A, I can use the row command. The first, uh, the first instance here is the, is the reference to the actual matrix that I'm working with, A, and then uh, one here for to the first row. If I want the second row, I can just replace that with a two, uh, and then it will extract the second row, easy enough. If for some reason I want the second row from row B, that's all, uh, sorry, from matrix B, that's also easy. And now I have extracted the second row from matrix B. This is just a mechanism for extracting rows. And there is a corresponding one for columns that you could also use. All right, so now that we have looked at uh, selecting elements and rows and columns within matrices, I would now like to review uh, and study some basic um, um, mathematical operations with matrices. So let's go ahead and create another text box here. And we're going to label the section as um, basic matrix math. Okay, so basic matrix math here. 
Um, and what kinds of things would we want to do? Well, um, the kind of things we like to do with matrices are adding them, subtracting them, oh, multiplying them by constants. Uh, in, well, we already looked at inverting them, but also things like multiplying them. So um, let's take a look at that. I'm going to use the same a as before. Let's just keep using that. a equals this. And um, then let's go ahead and create a matrix F, which will be, uh, let's do also a 3x3 three three matrix. Control M, create a 3x3, three three and just add some numbers here. Negative uh, 9. Uh, let's see, we have 8, 14, 4, some nice rounds. Negative, so oh, it was in my place. Negative 8. Uh, five and six. Okay, so we just have two arbitrary matrix matrices here with no actual units in them, but that's fine to demonstrate. So if we remember our matrix math, um, if we remember our linear algebra or our matrix math from uh, grade school, we should be able to uh, uh, we should be able to add matrices of the same that are of the same uh, dimensions, and we should be able to multiply matrices if they have matching dimensions. So let's take a look at that. So let's go ahead and give a plus f a try. And what do you know? That does produce a viable result. We get a plus f is 11, 8. And if you look at this, the, the first uh, element here, element 1, 1, uh, 7 plus 4 is 11. That is valid. If I do a minus f, that again, e that again is valid. Um, if you look at each individual element, the th the, it is performing, uh, s math is performing matrix math. Uh, matrix subtraction, I should say, not, not just some, not just something as vague as matrix math, it is subtracting matrices correctly. All right, so what's next? Uh, we could look at uh, multiplying by a constant. So let's give that a go. Let's say we have matrix G is defined as five times, uh, let's do five times matrix F. Does that work? And what do you know? It does. If I look at each element here, I would I see that there uh, the results of this are exactly just a simple constant multiplication of each of the elements in matrix F. So no surprises there. Okay. Now, if we if we think of our uh, matrix dimensions, a three by three should be compatible with a three by three. So let's go ahead. So we should just be able to multiply um, a times F. Now let's go ahead and try this. Let's say uh, H is defined as A times F. What do we get? We get 84, 45, negative 85. And I bet if we add, if we do this manually, let's let's go ahead and double check this. So the first element here should be this, the sum of this row times this column. So that would be four times seven, which is 28. So actually that would be four times seven. Um, plus two times eight, uh, plus negative five uh, times negative eight, and what do you know? It does come to eighty-four. So it is correctly handling matrix multiplication. Okay, so that's not a problem. Uh, what else could we do? So again, uh, now let's see what happens if we try to multiply incompatible matrices. So if I have a, um, let's say we have a three by one matrix, what happens then? So if you remember back to your, um, let me get to do a little text box here. If you have a, uh, again, we label things in terms of rows, comma, columns. So imagine I have a, a one by three matrix, actually a three by one matrix, sorry. And I'm trying to multiply this by a three by three matrix. Well, if we remember back to our basic matrix math, uh, we know that this should be incompatible, uh, that this should not be possible. So a uh, three by one times a three by three, this should not be possible because if you remember um, two el more elementary maths, this has to match this. The, the, the columns on the first much mass, uh, must match the rows on the second. So let's make sure S math is doing this properly and let's give that a go. So, and, and let's see what happens if we ask it to do that. Uh, all right, so let's go. Let's go. Let's go ahead and define a new matrix, which I'm going to call matrix I, and I'm going to go Control M, and I'm going to create oh, not a one by three, but a three by one. So let's go ahead and put in some numbers. Oh, let's go ahead and put in a few numbers here. 
negative 5, 8, and, oh, I don't know, 1. And now let's ask it to multiply, uh, let's ask it to multiply i times h. Ah, it produces an error message. It's telling us the number of rows and or columns of matrices or vectors do not match, which is exactly what we would expect. Like if this actually produced a value, um, if, this, if, this spat out, if this spat out a constant or it spat out a, uh, a square matrix or something like that, we would know SMath was doing something wrong. Uh, but in fact, it gave us an error, so we know that it is handling, um, so that it passed this test of matrix multiplication. It, sh it actually should output an error, and that is what it's doing. Okay, so we know that it is, in fact, actually handling that uh, properly. Okay, so let's not try to do uh, impossible things. Uh, SMath gets angry at you if you try to do impossible things. Um, so don't make uh, the SMath angry. You wouldn't like it when it's angry. <laughs> What's next? Uh, okay, so what could we do? Uh, there's one other one other um, command that works very usefully with this, and that it, that works very similar works very similar, or it, it comes up a lot when you're doing these kind of calculations, and that is the transpose. So we could do this a number of ways. Um, usually, I just use the insert uh, insert command to, to select the transpose command. But uh, let's say I want the transpose. Of, actually, let me um, pull back up that. I. That's still gonna, that's going to be useful. I just, I just controlled Z, undid that, undid the deletion of that to, to re-reference this I. So let's say I have matrix J. It's defined as, I'm going to go up here to the insert uh, function, and I'm going to get the transpose here. And I'm going to get the transpose of I, and that is in fact negative 5, 8, 1. And that is the correct transpose. I could do the same thing for the square matrix, but selecting the transpose is fairly straightforward. You simply select the transpose command and inside it then input whatever uh, matrix you want to take the transpose of. Uh, so fairly straightforward. Uh, and I think next we'll look at vectors. All right, now that we have reviewed some basic matrix math in uh, SMath, I would like to go on and discuss the topic of vectors and how um, SMath handles vectors. So the reason I'm including vectors in this uh, video, of course, is that vectors are a particular type of matrix or array. And of course, uh, as you remember from your engineering education or even just from basic physics, vectors can represent a variety of things. They can be uh, velocities, they can be uh, torques, they can be um, just displacement vectors. Any number of things can be represented by a vector. So I'm going to actually use a new A here because I think I don't want to, I think I've had enough of working through the alphabet. So I'm going to now define a new uh, section, or not define a new section, but label a new section with a text box that I'm just going to call uh, vectors. Um, vectors. So SMath handles vectors in a particular way, and it's a very specific way. So the key takeaway for this is that if you want to do a vector, a vector in SMath is handled by a single column matrix. So um, let's look at this. Let's define matrix A, and I'll put in a matrix. Now again, it's very important that you do not define this as one row with multiple columns, but uh, so I don't want one row with multiple columns. I want one column with multiple rows, and this will be handled as a vector in SMath. So I'm going to go ahead and handle, uh, I'm going to go ahead and add some numbers. I'm not going to put any units in this yet. I'll, I'm going to work with units a bit in the next section of this video. Um, two, let's do four, two, one. And then vector B is going to be, uh, let's say seven, or I guess eight. Let me, let me actually put the matrix in there, control M. Another three row, one column matrix to represent a vector. And uh, I'm gonna have, let's see, uh, negative three. Let's put a seven in there maybe. And we'll put a seven in there and then maybe a negative four. Just a few arbitrarily chosen numbers. And again, the reason these are represented as um, uh, the reason that these will be treated as vectors rather than matrices is because they are uh, one single row, or sorry, one single column with multiple rows. So first of all, um, let me illustrate the idea of the dot product. 
So there are a few things we want to be able to do with vectors. Uh, if we want to add or subtract vectors, that's really straightforward. We just use the exact same process we used for adding and subtracting in um, in this section here. We're looking at uh, looking at uh, matrices in general in SMath. Now, um, here's the thing. As you recall from earlier, normally if we try to multiply two independent or not independent, uh, true two incompatible matrices together, because uh, think about the dimensions on this. Both of these have the same dimension, and that would be a three by. Uh, these would both be a three uh, three by one matrices. So if I have a three by one, I'll use little matrix uh, matrix symbols here. If I have a three by one and another three by one. Normally, we would expect these two not to be able to be multiple, to be incompatible. We would expect these to not be able to be multiplied because they do because the uh, the last dimension on one doesn't matter match the first dimension on the other. So we would expect these not to be multipliable. However, let's go ahead and give this a try. Let's say, oh, I don't know, C uh, is equal to A times B. Huh, that's interesting. These are incompatible matrices, but we were actually able to get a multiplication. And the reason for that it's, is that this is not actually matrix multiplication. Um, the way SMath handles dot products is that if you have special, um, the special case of matrix where it's a single column, uh, if you want to, if you simply use the multiplication symbol there, uh, it will do the dot product rather than some sort of matrix multiplication. And we can double check this because let's see, um, four times negative three is negative 12. Um, four times two is 14, which will bring us up to two. And then four times, uh, one times negative four is negative four, and then that will bring us down to negative two. So it did in fact calculate the dot product. Now I'm not gonna go into all the uses of the dot product, but for those of you familiar with statics or dynamics or um, some certain mechanics topics, you'll know the importance of calculating cross products and dot products. And then the cross product, you can do this a number of ways, but I think the easiest way is going to simply be to use a command or a built-in function. So as we have done previously, I'm gonna go here to function and go to the matrix section and select uh, cross product. Actually, where is that hiding? Oh, actually, yes, this is not in there. Sorry about that. Um, it is in the operator section. And here you will find the cross product. So again, the cross product is not in the uh, functions tab, it is in the operator tab. Or you might be able to just use an X as well. Actually, let me see what happens if I do that. D is defined as, I'm gonna put an X in there. Now that's not gonna work. There's probably some way to uh, actually summon that X without, oh, we could probably use this. Um, oh, I guess not, no. There probably is a way to make that work, but uh, usually I just use what's in the operator menu, the option from the operator menu. So now I'm going to say D is equal to the cross product of A times B. And again, because it recognizes that these are both, uh, if I can manage to spell the word product correctly, um, I guess it's getting a little late. Um, so if I can, um, again, because these are one column matrices, uh, SMath represents these as vectors. So I should be able to take the cross product of them. And what do you know? I can. So that's the basic way of handling uh, vectors uh, in SMath. Now, of course, like with anything else, there's a lot more to this if you wanna go in greater depth. But uh, number one, I think of vectors, I think the two main operations I need to be able to do are dot product and cross product. And the key to remember with SMath is as long as you define your matrix as uh, one column with a, a number of rows, it will interpret that as a, uh, as a vector and that thus allowing it to perform dot products and cross product calculations. Next, I think it would be good to explore uh, how uh, units are handled within um, SMath and its matrix capabilities. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Um, we'll create a new section called units. Oh, gotta use a text box, not a regular variable definition. So um, let's go ahead and do that and talk about units. So, um, just like anything else, you're going to be able, just like anything else in, in SMath, you are going to be able to put units into these. 
and it's going to end up performing, uh, when it performs calculations, it is going to preserve those units as best it can. Um, or actually more likely, more precisely I should say, um, if, it is, if uh, it is not able to perform a function or a command while, while keeping those units intact, it's not going to do so. In other words, it will spit out a dimensional error. So let's go back to our, uh, let's see our original A matrix. Uh, well, actually, let's see the definition right here. Um, actually, let me do something a little simpler. Let me just do some two by two matrices. So let's put in a matrix E, and this is gonna equal uh, a matrix. Let's do a two by two matrix. Maybe a negative two feet. I need to disable this here. Okay, perfect. Negative two feet. And then let's say three feet. I'm just gonna go ahead and do everything in feet. Uh, seven feet. And uh, I don't know, just for fun, let's throw a meter in there. Negative eight meters. As we learned last time, or in lecture uh, three and four in this series, we know that we can use any units we want and uh, as long as they can be added or multiplied together, SMath will handle all the unit conditions. So there is matrix E. I'm gonna go ahead and define F in a similar manner. So I'm gonna make another two by two matrix. And let's go ahead and do, um, let's see, uh, let's put a matrix in there, another two by two one. And uh, let's consider Something like this. I'm going to, first I'll create another one with just lengths and we'll explore uh, entities with, so in this one we're going to have variables that are just, or values that are all length as well. So um, let's put in maybe eight um, feet. Oh, I don't know, negative five feet. Uh, seven meters. Uh, seven meters. And uh, just to make nobody happy, let's put in negative 2.5 yards. Um, does it actually, does it know yards? Yes, it does. Negative 2.5 yards, which again, a yard is equal to a, uh, is equal to three feet if uh, for any of those uh, of you living out in metric land. And, but when I say metric land, I basically mean the entire planet Earth, but that's a discussion for another time. So let's explore using these as a, uh, a way to illustrate how SMath handles matrices and uh, units. And in fact, actually I'll put one more matrix together and this is gonna be something that is also two by two, but it's gonna have units that aren't um, in feet, or sorry, units that aren't, uh, that do not have dimensions of length. So I don't know, let's have some fun. Let's put in one hour. Um, let's put in 106 minutes. We're gonna do units of time for some reason. Uh, let's say uh, maybe 4,000 seconds. These are all quantities of approximately the same order of magnitude. And then maybe another 1.2 hours. Okay, so let's see if SMath is going to be able to handle units properly. First of all, let's see what happens when I try to add E uh, plus F together. Well, there we have it. Um, we see here that is able to simply add all these things together. Now, if I want to check the values, I probably should convert this to feet, ask it, or not convert, but specifically ask it to ask SMath to display it in feet. And we see that negative two plus eight is six. So yes, this is working. Um, adding things up together like this is going to work just fine. Um, perform basically adding. Um, matrices that are the same dimension and have the same units are going to turn out just fine. Okay, um, because again all you're doing is just adding a bunch of lengths together in this case. Now what would happen if I tried to add E plus G? Hmm, let's find out. Units don't match. Units don't match. Hmm, so SMath again, so again SMath speaks units. It understands the relationship between these units. So if you try to do something that is physically impossible or impossible with how we define units um, or dimensions, then it's gonna spit back an error. So I don't care how you uh, parse it, 
there is no way to add a feet to an hour. Those are just fundamentally different quantities. They're fundamentally different dimensions. Now I can multiply, I should be able to multiply these two together because that would produce some weird foot hour unit. Um, but that would still be, that would be very odd, but that would still be a valid unit. But I can't add feet and hours together because this one is length, this one is time. It's just like we looked at previously in an earlier lecture where we tried to add um, length to volume. Those quantities just are not compatible. So we're just going to leave this as an impossible um, we're just going to leave this as an impossible um, oh, expression. So now let's try multiplication. E times F. And because these are not um, because these here are not uh, one by uh, basically one column matrices, this is actually going to do a matrix multiplication instead of trying to do a dot product. Interesting. So what happened here was that it went through the matrix multiplication, and this should not surprise us that all of the units uh, or all of the terms in this matrix have dimensions of length squared. And I could leave this in meters squared, um, but I'm just going to put that back to feet squared. And now I have all the dimensions or all the values of this in feet squared. Now let's try E times G. Huh. Interesting. Now I get a matrix that has dimensions of length and time. And you know, that makes sense. Uh, generally, you can multiply and divide any units together that you would like. So generally, that's not a problem. Actually, I'm not aware of a case where it would be a problem. Uh, you can multiply length, you can uh, by time, you can divide them together. Um, sometimes this has more useful applications or more uh, meaningful, physical, physically meaningful applications. An example of that would be divi dividing um, length over time, uh, which in case you get a, uh, a velocity, of course. Now, um, velocity or rate of travel or speed or whatever it might be. So you can usually always, like I, I, I don't even want to say usually, you can always multiply uh, units together because you're just going to end up getting these interesting composite units like meters seconds. Okay, so again, that's going to be the basic way that SMath handles matrices and vectors. Uh, the key takeaways for this are that um, if you're adding matrices, you need to make sure if you're adding and subtracting matrices, they will have to have uh, compatible dimensions. However, if you're multiplying, they don't need to have any kind of compatible dimensions. SMath will happily work through the math and spit out uh, a result, even if it seems a bit odd or nonsensical. Finally, I would like to wrap this lecture up by working through a very simple example. Uh, let's just label this example. And I'm just going to do a very trivially simple example, and I'm just going to, uh, and the trivial example I'm going to use is solving for the intersection, or sorry, the, inter uh, the intersect of uh, two lines. So let's just co go ahead and create uh, two lines, the equation of two, lin basically two linear equations. So let's say, and what I'm entering here is just going to be a text line, basically, uh, you know, a label in a text box. Nothing here is going to be executed. So I'll say maybe 2x plus 5y equals 8, and I don't know, negative 3x plus 6y equals 7. So um, all I want to do is use matrices or I'm using matri use matrix methods and S math to solve uh, this system of linear equations. So I'm going to start by defining my coefficient matrix. And if you're, uh, if you need to remember what I'm doing here, or you need to realize what I'm doing here, uh, just think back to basic uh, algebra, or you know, very similar or very simple uh, linear algebra, uh, and think how you can uh, just recall how you can solve systems of linear equations with matrices. That's all I'm doing here. So, the general form of a uh, system of linear equations in matrix form is something like this. You have a uh, coefficient matrix, which we, you might refer to as A, which, or which is often referred to as A. It's multiplied by some uh, variable matrix, in this case X, which, or in this case what I will label as X, and it is equal to um, some constant matrix B. So what we need to do is we need to solve for uh, we need to solve for matrix X here. And to do that, we just multiply the inverse of A times B. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is set up my coefficient matrix. Now I'm just going to say A is equal to this, and I'm going to press Control M to define a matrix, and I'm going to define a two by two matrix as this. 
and the coefficients will be 2, 5, negative 3, 6. Then I want to define my constant matrix. B is defined as, and I want to insert a uh, 2 by 1 matrix. Uh, 2 rows, 1 column. And that's just going to be 8 and 7. Finally, well, maybe not finally. Um, actually, yeah, I'll go ahead and just take care of this. Uh, X, matrix X, is going to be defined as uh, I am going to get the uh, inverse function. I'll put the fun I'll select function and go to the go down to the matrix section and select inverse or invert, I should say. Invert matrix A and then multiply by matrix B. So X is going to be formed by first inverting matrix A and then multiplying by B. And what do I get? Um, X is equal to 0.48 um, and 1.407. Or in other words, our first variable, which is X, um, if I just enter this as text, X is equal to 0 0.482 and Y is equal to 1.407. Now, if you really wanted to get fancy, you could actually have these reference the um, uh, the individual elements. And actually, you know what? In fact, maybe I'll do just that. Instead of going and copying these uh, or typing them by hand, we have SMath. Let's actually use its capabilities. So I'm going to say um, X now is defined as um, that's going to be A and then the uh, square bracket symbol to select a given element out of it. And that's going to be 1 comma one. Uh, let's see. No, that's not quite what I want. It's definitely not two. Uh, let's see. Oh, actually, I want matrix X. Sorry about that. Not matrix A. So one, one, and that is 0. 0.412. And then Y is equal to the two, one position. So the two, one position of matrix uh, X, and that is then equal to 1.4074. So if I needed to uh, change something about this, like if you in a more complicated spreadsheet, I would probably have a whole bunch of calculations leading into a system of equations, and I would want to solve for these, and then once I had the outputs, I would want to then use those variables somewhere else in the calculation. And using the, uh, the uh, separate element, or find element function that we looked at previously, we can go and continue our calculations by referencing these values. All right, so that's based, that, those are some of the basics of how uh, matrices, vectors, and their related operations work in SMath. I think that'll do it for today's lecture. Please let me know if you have any questions. I will be putting out some more videos in SMath as I work through this series. I do have a few other things I want to cover. If there's, if, again, if you have any questions or any suggestions for what we might want to hear in this series or in others, please let me know. And as always, thank you.